All right, we are live. Hello, Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, everyone's having a wonderful start to your Monday. Um, so today we're talking about a topic. It is drug-induced nutrient depletion. Now, this is a topic that most people have not a clue about. Um, and not to mention that, but also when your physician prescribes you these medications, they don't tell you um, what can happen to your the nutrients in your body. Um, maybe if you have a really good pharmacist at the counter where you pick up your where you pick up your medications, they might enlighten you on what you need to take because what can happen with um, these drugs that you're on. Um, so this is not my wheelhouse. This is all Ryan. So I'm going to hand it over to him. And I'll jump in anytime I think things might get a little bit too technical or scientific, and I'll try to help us dumb it down a little bit. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> and I'll try to keep it simple, but this is a passionate topic for me. So I, I tend to go ramble off into different rabbit holes on these on this topic. So from my perspective as a pharmacist, I started as a community pharmacist working the bench and seeing people come in. Really, all it was was filling prescription medication orders from a physician. And let me tell you, I'm not here today to bash the the big pharma or the, the, the prescription industry. Um, that's not this message. Actually, this message is more about an awareness. So I want to bring awareness to this topic. It seems to not have really received much traction at all. And I'm not sure why, because maybe it's the mainstream physician side where they're just not paying attention to it, but they really should be because in the pharmaceutical industry, when they, when they get a broad, drug product brought to market, as you see, there's a lot of um, clinical trials and studies and documentation, there's package inserts, it's well documented that drug-induced nutrient depletion is a very real thing. And what that just basically means is that prescription drugs can cause your bodies to be de depleted of essential vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. So it's a complex topic. I was not really all that sure how I wanted to break it down. I was thinking, well, I could do it by I could do it by disease state. I could do it by um, mineral that is, you know, that, that's depleted. Um, and then I could go, of course, off of certain prescription drugs. So I'm going to kind of go by disease state. But to be honest with you, I would say almost every single class of medication depletes some vitamin and mineral. I mean, we're seeing an antihypertensive, so blood pressure meds. We're seeing it in anti-diabetic meds, so all, all the blood, blood sugar lowering medications. We're seeing it in antidepressants, antibiotics for sure, which by the way, this is a multi-part series, and I know Lisa, you'll love this. But one of the one of the parts we're going to cover is drug-induced um, microbiome disruption. Uh, yeah. That'll be a big one. Uh, but of course, antibiotics do a little bit of both. They 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 deplete minerals, vitamins, and stuff, and they also deplete our microbiome and our gut functioning and uh, communication and all that stuff. So um, there's, I mean, virtually everything. You know, all these prescription drugs. When you start going down the hall and you're looking at the resources and you're looking at the minerals are completely like wow how is this how is this a thing and i'll tell you from my experience so i'm on the bench you come in for a prescription med you are you are filling a water pill a diuretic okay and i've seen this case a lot you're filling a diuretic say it's hydrochlorothiazide because you're just recently diagnosed with blood pressure and it's one of the first line meds they use and i don't let you walk out the door i'm like hey look i need you to know what this drug is what to expect from it how long you expect to be on it and I tell these people, I said, you can expect maybe to feel some anxiety, maybe to have some headaches, maybe some muscle spasms. And I let them know. I said, this is important. And you really should supplement with magnesium. So, you know, weeks go by and the same patient will come back in the door and lo and behold, they have a prescription for an antidepressant or anxiety medication. And I'm looking at it going, hold on a second. Before we fill this medication, do you recall the conversation we had? And I, I, I walk it back a little bit and say, well, let me tell you this. How about from this angle? Magnesium depletion also shows signs of muscle spasms, anxiety, and headaches. Yeah, you see what I did there? And the patient kind of goes, okay, let's not fill this prescription yet. What magnesium do you recommend? And then we would go that, way, that route. But I... I feel like I'm one of the minor, like the minority. I'm the minority in that in that world. Oh, for sure. And think about how many times you've gone to the pharmacy sure. and and they they haven't done that. I mean, that's like where Ryan's like passion lies. Sure, so like, yeah. He loves to help mm -hmm. um, educate and let uh, people understand Absolutely. what's going on, not yeah. just you know aimlessly do the job by filling a prescription and passing it on. 
Yeah, and I hate it. Nowadays, it's a volume game. These pharmacies are stressed out. The pharmacists are being inundated with other nonsense. I mean, they're, it's called drug utilization review. Before any drug is dispensed, they evaluate you and your drug history to make sure there's no inter interactions, drug contraindications, anything like that. But yet, they're leaving this really important part out. Um, and I know pharmacists don't mean to, but I, it's very rare to, to, to hear somebody speak to that level. Um, and we really need to be doing a better job, we need to be doing a better job. And look, it's because of patient out. We want to improve patient outcomes. It's not because I don't want them to get help with the medication. It's like, no, hold up. It could be, be, just be a side effect. So the point of that story was so often, so often, uh, and this is polypharmacy. This is the way it is in our country, in the United States of America. I mean, most people are on some prescription medication that can cause a side effect, right? Like anxiety. Next thing you know, they're going back to the doctor. And now they're prescribed another medication. So then they're coming back and so that becomes polypharmacy. And it's a wicked, wicked cycle. It's very hard to break out of it. It's, it's education. And then by that point, it, it's over time. These nutrients become depleted over time. So they do become much harder um, to, to figure out and to navigate. And it can take some, some time and some effort to, to get you out of that nasty cycle. So, so um, you're also saying that typically when you're on a prescription, you're not just on one. So this nutrient depletion, it, I mean, encompasses all of this lineup here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And because just one, and it's like, so the med, one med we'll talk about today is cover, it knocks out five or six important essential nutrients. All right. So yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately that's, that's the, the name of the game is to try to help people prevent, like, look, and, and spend the spend. We will, we don't want people to spend so much money on prescription meds. No, we don't want people to rely on prescription meds for, for a side effect of another medication. That seems ridiculous, right? So that's nuts. I think I covered everything. So we said, um, oh, and benzodiazepines are another class of meds. So for people on anxiety meds like Xanax, um, thyroid, thyroid's a class, HRT, HRT and um, birth control. Another, another really big class of meds that knock out some, some important essential vitamins and minerals. Acid reflux, holy crap, that's the one where you're, 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 you're taking PPIs or an, a histamine blocker for stomach acid because you're getting reflux. Wow, you're changing the pH of the stomach. You're really jacking up some, some nutrients there. Sure. And a lot of times, stomach acid reflux is due to low stomach acid. Right. So it doesn't really make sense. But So you're treated as if you have high stomach acid, but really you have low and you're getting acid reflux and you're treated for yeah. high. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, there's, and these will all be the multi part series. We'll cover these at some level, but NSAIDs, you know, the anti inflammatories like uh, naproxen and Advil, and um, also the opiates. A lot of people use opiates. So there's a lot of drug interactions and drug nutrient depletion there as well. So the way I decided I thought we would go about this is looking at it from sort of a, a big picture. And we're going to talk about cardiovascular disease. That's the number one killer, it's the most common. Over 100 million Americans have some level of high blood pressure. Um, and in this category, I did throw in statin drugs that are typically used for cholesterol, but they're really used in, in, for inflammation, reducing cardiovascular events. Right. So I threw, I threw statins in here because I wanted to get a little extra into this video so that uh, there's a lot, so much to cover. So, right. And this is not to say stop your medications mm. that you're put on. Um, this is to make you aware that these medications that maybe your body needs right now mm -hmm. are just causing nutrient depletions that, in, that if you, um, you need to make sure you're supplementing with the, the essential nutrients, guys, um, which we have right here are, are with our daily essentials pack and then the factor four. Supplementing with these to prevent those nutrient depletions to prevent maybe another prescription that you think you need or your doctor thinks you need based on a yeah, a side effect of the one. And I don't just blame pharmaceutical. I agree with Lisa. And I'm also a proponent of making sure blood pressure is controlled. If lifestyle is not doing it, which for most people it's not, that's the reason why we're in this issue, right? We're eating junk food, we're relying on a sad American diet, standard American diet, highly processed foods. They're calorie rich, they're nutrient poor. I mean, so we're in a really bad state of, of, of health right now. And so medications to help get our blood pressure under control are indicated. Same with statin drugs. I'm not going to put my opinion exactly on statin drugs, but yeah, I mean, ultimately we do see the evidence supporting the use of statin drugs in, in, a, in certain classes of people, but we're, I think there's 50 plus million Americans on a statin drug. That sounds outrageous to me, um, especially when you consider all the different side effects and, and nutrients that are depleted by that class of meds. So that's the way I want to approach it a little bit today. Um, so I, I was thinking, okay, so let's go into the blood pressure thing. So again, that example of a water pill, right? You go in, it's first one of your first line medications when you have high blood pressure. So, and 100 million Americans have, right? So 
we have, a, we have, we have now you just, and it says it clear as day what the water pill does, what hydrochlorothiazide does, or chlorthalidone does, or furosemide. That's Lasix. That's a different class, but it's still considered diuretic. What they do, they prevent the reabsorption of sodium potassium uh, chloride, and they, they excrete massive amounts of magnesium. Hypomagnesemia, it's a very known, well-known documented clinical findings, and just nobody seems to pay attention to it. So again, go back to that example, the person that gets on a water pill is not told that. Now they feel like crap. They are not feeling themselves. They feel out of whack, they're back, they get another medication and so on and so forth. But the drug, it's not just magnesium. We're, we're knocking out potassium, we know sodium goes, we know chloride goes, and you know, in some in some examples, calcium also goes. Mm. So coenzyme Q10 is another one that you that you see go. So 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 that's from sad, right? yeah, that's well, no, that's also that's also in the diuretic class. Okay, also in the diuretic class, and we'll talk about that for the statins. But so like, okay, dietary supplements. How how effective? A, a highly effective ultra magnesium complex. When we talk about the statin drugs, you're going to hear me talk about the D. We just said. Coenzyme Q10, which is our factor four. You know, here's your multivitamin with your Bs, your water solubles. I mean, so you know, you, you know, you're running, and all of your other essential macro, your essential micros. Um, and so I'm looking at this, and I just feel like so many of our problems are based right off of right in that issue alone. So the use of dietary supplements, more and more physicians are coming around now. There is way more literature to support the use of dietary supplements. Remember, guys, you need to pick a high quality. Uh, supplement for sure, because like Lisa will always tell you, it's just as important what's in it as what, also what is not not in it. So, um, and then zinc, selenium. Uh, there's other like, and I, it's like there's there's a bunch there's a bunch of things. So, and of course the zinc, you know, we have zinc in our in our multivitamin as well, which is a really important antioxidant and has a, a lot of functions. But think about the example of magnesium again, involved in over 300 biochemical reactions. Thousands of reactions, vitamins, essential vitamins and minerals are a part of. And when you interrupt, so let's go back to the blood pressure example again. You use a diuretic, that's a water pill. Let's, let's get rid of the sodium. Water will follow, osmosis follows, right? You drink, you're getting rid of fluids. Great. Okay. Body reacts. There's compensatory mechanisms. But what you're doing is you're interrupting some aspect of the cascade of events that the, the home that is considered homeostasis. That's the body's normal state of health, right? Health and balance. So when that gets disrupted, there's a compensatory mechanism by the body. So now the body goes, oh, crap. Well, well, maybe we should add another medicine. Blood pressure, it went down for four, five, six weeks, but then it kind of crept back up. So let's go to another med. Let's go to another. We're going to try another medication. Then they put you on an ACE inhibitor, right? So you're going to see um, lisinopril is probably the most common ACE inhibitor. And same issues. So it's like you, you, have, you have similar issues that you just like – you. You have to be aware of these micronutrient deficiencies. And I'm not saying that that's not appropriate therapy to be on a, a water pill and an ACE inhibitor. That actually is probably very appropriate. Um, but just guys, please be informed and educated on which vitamins and minerals you are depleting your body with. How, how would one know this? So your doctor puts you on a medication. Sure. Without you being able, you sitting here and telling each one because like say someone emails you and uh -huh. says, hey, um, Dr. Ryan, I'm on this medication. Yep. What should I take, avoid? I mean- Yeah, and since I'm not in, involved in your patient care, I can't give you yeah. specific health recommendations, but I can give you broad stroke. I mean, most physicians will order another blood panel, look at your Chem 7 or Chem 8, and you'll see sodium and chloride, but then they kind of stop there. They don't pay attention to magnesium. It's not an easy one to test anyway. You're, most of your magnesium is in your bone, muscles, and tissues. I'm just drilling on that one right now. But yeah, I mean, I agree. You should want to know, like from your physician, is there a way to measure, to monitor my progress and checking in on, on micronutrient status? And not a bad idea to, when you pick up your prescription, ask your pharmacist. Please. Now that you know about nutrient, if you didn't know about nutrient depletion, now that you do know about it, say, okay, hey doc, or hey pharmacist, yeah, sure. I'm on, now that I'm on this you know, prescription, what other supplements, vitamins, minerals should I be supplementing with that this medication will start to deplete? So ask these questions. They are, they have the knowledge. Just if mine has the knowledge, they have the knowledge. You just have to ask. Yeah, it's right there in front of them for sure. They've been told it many, many, many times. All right, Lisa, you want to see if there's any questions on yeah. the board here? Okay. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Drug-induced nutrient depletion. So, so basically, just taking this, uh, taking the drug, 
depletes your a nutrient or nutrients. We are frozen. Hope we're still not frozen. <laughs> okay. Um, if I have any additional. I mean, things like anxiety, chronic stress also further deplete the body. So we talked about lifestyle. Lisa will often talk about the food sources just don't have the nutritional density that they should or once had. But like things like magnesium is further depleted and B12 further depleted by chronic stress and anxiety. Um, exercise, um, different like lifestyle things will knock out magnesium. So I, yeah, I, I don't understand this culture where we're not reckoned, why we don't recommend magnesium and essential minerals and vitamins more often. Do you take these in unison with what the products are already taking? So yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that means if you are taking a prescription drug, yes, you take the, the vitamins and minerals at the same time. Yes, you are trying, yeah, to, you are trying to prevent the depletion at the further possible. I, I'll give you best practice, best like you can, yeah. You, I'll give you best practices on certain things, like when to take things. We'll talk about with antibiotics and probiotics and different things of that nature. But for now, um, there's really no, I mean, well, you know, there's certain timing on some things, but really nothing specific related to this. Um, so blood pressure, big category. We could spend a lot more time here. We could go through each and every single drug, but the message is just please be educated on the medicine you're taking. You want to send me an email, I'm happy to respond. Remember, I'm going to give you a broad stroke. I can't tell you specifically what to do, but based on your med, I can tell you what's likely a depleted mineral or vitamin. Perfect. Yeah. And, and that's what I think, Every That's what I think this is really about. That's like, what this is about. That's what we want sure. you all to understand. So ask away. And uh, what, what it's about, I'm going to say it again. It's about people feeling better and avoiding unnecessary additional prescriptions. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a prescription come in that in my professional opinion was treating a side effect of another med. Right. It, it's mind boggling. Look at the numbers of polypharmacy, how, like the average number of people are taking three or more medications. And what about like uh, B, B vitamin depletion? I know, sure. I know that's a big one. And a yeah, lot of times of course. You know, when we're depleted in B vitamins, we're tired and, and you just wonder what, yeah. And you Don't wonder what yourself. that is. And then you start to, Maybe, maybe you go to the doctor, I'm tired all the time, what's going on? Maybe you just start excess caffeine, who knows what you yeah. do. But this could just be simply that because of the prescriptions you're taking, your B vitamins are depleted and we have the full B vitamin complex in our multivitamin. Mm -hmm. So like these are what, what we always say, our, our, our daily essentials and factor four, like these are what everybody needs to take every single day. Um, whether you're on prescription uh, medications or not, we always want to prevent these nutrient depletions because on top of, drug-induced nutrient depletion. There are other things in our life that I've talked about before you've heard it that further deplete our nutrients. So this is just one big topic. Yes. So I did say I would throw statins in. I am I'm, I'm, I'm kind of regret the fact that I did that because statin <laughs> being such a large topic, you know, I, probably I consider 50 million Americans use a statin. Professional opinion aside, I mean, they are, they work, they do their job, but Listen to people when they tell you the most common side effect is a myalgia, muscle ache, muscle pain. And you listen to it, and then you look at the mechanism of action. How does the drug work? Well, it's an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. Co, co, what's that coenzyme? Coenzyme. And then you, know, you, then you hear all these, these reports of depleting coenzyme Q10. So I'm not saying that there's conclusive evidence that statins deplete CoQ10, but one study showed 54% of people on a statin had a reduction in CoQ10 levels. Okay, that's pretty significant. But then on the other hand, patients that were suffering from myalgia and low Q CoQ10 levels that took CoQ10 did not have improvement in one study. So while it's not fully conclusive, <laughs> coenzyme Q10 is incredibly important in so many ways and so many aspects of our bio biology. To me, I wouldn't even want to take the risk. And there's enough evidence Empirically, no, I would just empirically say, yeah, I should be taking coenzyme Q10 sure. For, for sure. And I would recommend that to people in the pharmacy setting and whether, whether or not, but they most, most often the vast majority will come back and say, thank you. I really, I, I think this is helping a lot. So, cause my allergies, there's dull aching muscle aches, pains, cramps. I mean, that's, that those, that's a common side effect of statin drugs. So we want to address the coenzyme Q10 topic and you'll find that in factor four. Um, and then also some fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin E and vitamin D. So as you know, 
the lipid lowering drugs, the statin classic drugs are lowering the cholesterol. Well, cholesterol plays an important part in, in cellular health. It's also a big factor in our vitamin D synthesis in the sun. So now you're seeing, right? You're seeing statin patients with depleted levels of vitamin D. Now we're already low. Most people are already low. The food sources of vitamin D suck. So, okay, like guys, there's enough now. Vitamin D, like absolutely essential vitamin D. You need to be taking vitamin D with K2. Um, 2,000 units, at least 2,000 units a day. Monitor your levels, get your levels checked. That is one that's easy to check and very cheap. So please have your physician order that number. But if you're on a statin, now we've got CoQ10 knocked out. We've got vitamin E knocked out. We've got vitamin D knocked out. And so also zinc. And so now, now we're like, you're at my, you're at my counter. You're picking up your water pill. You're picking up your statin. And, and you, you just caught an earful for 15 minutes. But it's not because of, I'm simply just trying to educate and make sure that you guys are well informed. So that that's the importance of of kind of those two, yeah, those two classes of meds. So, oh, omega three fatty acids, omega three fatty acids as well. Also, shocking, yes, it, within a statin class too. Omega three fatty acids. That is your fish oil. That's your fish oil. So if you're on a statin drug, of course, most people know fish oil is good for cholesterol. It can it can raise the HDL. It can lower um, triglycerides. And so, uh, but because the statin drugs can also affect your essential fatty acids, I strongly suggest you staple your provider or you start on factor four because it has um, omega-3 fatty acids. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't know if this is you personally, but I'm, I've heard it many times in my practice as well as I'm sure you've heard it yourself. A lot of people say that if they're on a medication, so say you're on something for high, uh, high cholesterol, therefore I don't have high cholesterol, but you mm -hmm. do, you're just medicated to keep it down. But you think I don't have high cholesterol, therefore I don't need to take anything that helps lower my cholesterol. But then you think about it, brain, it's down because of medication. And if you choose to want to stay on that medication, it works for you, that's great. But then you also have to understand, again, the nutrient depletion that's happening. So regardless yeah. Yeah. of it, you've got to be supplementing with it. I mean, this lineup is powerful. Yeah, no, it really is. And this is your essential daily essentials pack. I mean, obviously we talked about adding this in, so you'll see that here soon. Um, but that daily essentials pack, guys, so that's it for us today. How do we do on yeah, time? Good, great stuff. So again, a lot of these questions, I always say, I always say, obviously email me because yeah. um, I'm able to get to the, the emails um, better than Ryan is. If there's something specific like about medications, you can still send them to me and I will always go to him and ask or I'll forward it to him or we'll discuss it together and I'll get back to you. Awesome. So like I said, multi-part series, guys. So please stay tuned for a lot more on this topic. Let me know. Uh, send us an email, comments, questions, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Yes. And apologize for all the doors banging, but- Oh, kids home for summer break. That's the way it goes. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful, productive okay. Monday. Bye.